I think that in order to drive massive scale change to address these devastating threats of climate change and biodiversity loss, we need public pressure. We need the enthusiasm of youth. We need people to be aware of how dangerous these threats are. And with that comes two things. We have outrage and optimism. And I think we have an absolute need for outrage, to be furious at the systems that have got us into this situation and to put pressure on systems and companies and governments to avoid those mistakes in the future. But we also need optimism because we need to know that it is possible to have a huge and incredibly positive impact on nature and biodiversity if we all engage in this movement. And so I really think we need that sweet combination of outrage and optimism if we're going to have a positive impact. I'm Tom Crowther, I'm an ecologist studying in ETH Zurich. Big agriculture is the largest environmental footprint. Of course, we have a huge and ever-growing human population, and agriculture is necessary to feed that growing population. But the way in which we've been promoting agricultural practices over recent decades and centuries almost is a very exploitative approach. So we will often use up an, uh, an ecosystem for everything that it's got and then move on to a different ecosystem and then use up all of those resources. And often the ecosystems that are left behind can be very degraded and they can be lacking the nutrients and the carbon and all of the biodiversity that is necessary to keep that ecosystem healthy. So we need to find all of the ways to revitalize those left behind ecosystems. Common efforts to restore land involve protecting degraded areas, protecting places that used to be a natural forest or a natural grassland, and by protecting those areas, those ecosystems can return and become very, very healthy. Those are often the most ecologically responsible ways to do restoration. But it can also involve the planting of trees, the planting of native mixtures of species that can bring back the biodiversity that's necessary to maintain a healthy ecosystem or it can mean adapting your agricultural practice to integrate new species, where those new species can not only bring back biodiversity in the surrounding area, but they can also improve your own productivity and increase the yields that are coming from those agricultural practices because different species facilitate one another and help the entire ecosystem to be healthier. The single most important key to responsible and effective restoration is finding the innovation that makes nature the economically sustainable option for local communities. And those solutions exist in every ecosystem across the globe. In Portugal, I was there a couple of months ago, they are restoring native species to limit the fire damage that has been happening over the last couple of decades as a result of the planting of eucalyptus. They had loads of eucalyptus plantations for paper production, but those eucalyptus plants burn every single year, causing huge damage and economic losses and a loss of life. So they are restoring native species like oaks and corks and pines, which are much more resistant to that fire damage. And that means that the entire community is benefiting. In the Sahel region, where it's very dry, they restore patches of forest, and that means that those forests capture a lot of water and nutrients so that the nearby agriculture is much more productive. And that means that the local community then restores more forests so that there's more agricultural productivity. And there's other examples in many agroforestry settings where you can integrate trees within your cocoa plantations and that can actually increase your yield because those trees give shading and they trap nutrients and water for the cocoa plants around. There's examples of this in every single ecosystem across the globe. There are some places in the world where ecosystems are very much dominated by a single species. And in those places, often high up in the boreal forest, you can often see single stands of just a, an individual species, and that can be the natural state. But those ecosystems still have thousands of understory plants and understory microbes and animals that are necessary for maintaining the entire ecosystem. And across the rest of the world, the vast majority of ecosystems have 5, 10, 20, up to 100, 200 species per hectare. And all of those species are integral to the survival of every other individual. A key concept in ecology is that no single species exists on its own. Everything depends on other species to survive, and that includes humans. 
Nature is thousands of species interacting to maintain a healthy, long-term sustainable ecosystem that supports the organisms that live there and the humans that depend on it. Ecosystem restoration is a very complex umbrella term encompassing thousands of activities, ranging from the conservation of an ecosystem so that the trees and plants and animals in that area can flourish, all the way to agroforestry, where you're integrating different species, different mixtures within your agricultural system, so then more biodiversity will make your system more productive, all the way to individual planting of trees that can help for water storage or local temperatures for local communities. But ultimately, the goal for any of these practices is to promote biodiversity that can improve the sustainability of that ecosystem for long-term human well-being and happiness. There are always better ways to make ecosystems sustainable. If it's an agricultural area where you're literally growing a product that the community depends on, integrating other species can often increase the yields of those agricultural products, and that means there'll be economic benefits for the community, and that will promote the idea that they can integrate more and more species. If it's the protection of a forest so that nutrients are trapped in the nearby agricultural land, that is another way that nature can bring economic benefits to local communities and promote the preservation of nature. And in every single ecosystem around the world, there can be economic benefits that come from preserving nature. The key to effective restoration is just finding those economic solutions in every different region.